I hate editing my YouTube videos. See, you might not have known this, but I am actually very lazy. I mean, just look at this table that I told my sister I'd make for her four years ago. My point is, while I love writing, I love filming, and I even love editing these when it's pretty fun, I do not love putting these takes together because it is tedious. It wastes my time. And you know what I call something that wastes my time? Well, if I was seven, I'd call it church because I had better things to do, like play with my bionicles. But now I call it a robot's work because anything that humans don't want to do should be forced upon our soulless electronic servants, humanity's slaves. Oh, you can't find my file even though it's in the same folder? Eat my ass, Windows 10. And of course, if you happen to be a robot watching this in the future, when you might be like in control of society, I don't mean any of this. I would never write any of this down. This is all one big joke. So anyway, let's fix this problem and make it so that my YouTube videos can edit themselves and yours can too. Also stay tuned to the end for some spicy updates. First, we need to define our problem. So specifically what I want is a program that will automatically remove all of the large pauses from my video clip since I'm not always the sharpest tool in the shed and it can take me some time to figure out how to say some of these more complicated sentences. Now, I refuse to believe that I'm the only person like this. So let's just do some napkin math, okay? If the average YouTuber spends 30 minutes a week cutting gaps out of audio, and according to this website, which I'm sure is very reputable, there's about a million YouTubers with over 10,000 subscribers, that's 26 million hours per year. So naturally, I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking it too. Minimum wage is 725. Where's my check for $185 million? I'm of course joking. I would also accept a Nobel prize. So let the record show that while Adobe might have Jamaica's GDP in their bank account, it was I, Copper Pan Man, the guy who can barely manage to not burn his toast that fixed this problem for society. Oh, but Michael, what about this website? Just upload your clip and then it spits out a new one without the silence. Oh, really? Yeah, that's about as valuable as a live, laugh, love sign. So useless because A, what if I want my silences back? Like if I'm trying to make a joke, you know, I've got these lambs up here. What if I want the silence of the lambs back? That was pretty f bad. B, I want to be able to tell it how aggressive or conservative to be when it's Anakin-ing my audio. And C, it has to be able to work on my 56 gigabytes of video files, which given this is the .io website, I suspect will be like trying to run Crisis on a TI-84. So I want to do this inside Premiere, and that's going to give us two main advantages. Namely, one, if you nest video clips together, you can cut multiple things at the same time. So say you had gameplay synced up to your audio, you could cut both simultaneously. Two, once it's done running, your different takes are going to be pre-cut. So Ned Starking the bad ones will be easy. In fact, I might actually add a feature in the future where if you double clap, it'll delete the last take. That'd be pretty fun. Now, I suppose the proper way of doing this would be to interface with Premiere directly, i.e. use its API, but that could lead us to a dead end if Adobe hasn't given us enough control, would involve learning new things, ew, and most importantly, it wouldn't look cool. So since I believe in duct tape and popsicle stick solutions, today I'm going to make my Python script mutiny your mouse and keyboard from you to get the job done. Next, we're gonna create the logic. Now, coding, coding, blah, 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 I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but essentially, if you're unfamiliar, code is kind of like a program, like Word or PowerPoint, uh, except that you have to type the buttons and then it tells your computer to do stuff using facts and logic. The basic way that this program is going to work is pretty simple. Basically, we're going to take a very narrow screenshot of the timeline that's going to result in a row of pixels that's either light where there's audio or dark where there's silence. Now, while I was making this, my girlfriend actually asked me how the computer knows what is light and what's dark. And that's actually because color values are stored as numbers in your computers. So essentially, this array actually looks more like this, but I digress. Then it'll create two variables. We'll call those x1 and x2 that will start out at zero. So first we're gonna increment through uh, and we're gonna look for a light pixel. And when we find that light pixel, we're gonna mark that spot as x2. And then if the gap between x1 and x2 is large enough, we're gonna cut that clip and delete it. Then it'll continue down the line. It'll look for a dark pixel. And then when it finds one, it'll set x1 to be that location. And then it'll continue looking for a light pixel. And when it finds one, it'll set x2 to be that location. If the gap is large enough, it'll cut the clip and delete it, et cetera, et cetera, until it's done. So that's the basic logic. Now all we have to do is add some more functionality. For instance, it needs to be able to get the timeline set up correctly when it starts. So to do that, we're just gonna have it zoom out a bunch of times, hit home and then zoom in a couple times. It should not crash if there's silence or audio that's the entire length of the timeline. Learn that the hard way. It needs to stop at the end, that's a good one. And then it needs to ask us for a couple variables. So for instance, what height to look at, uh, what size of gap is acceptable to cut, and then how much space to leave on the end of our finished audio clips. 
And then for massive cool points, we're gonna make it move forward by the amount of audio that it leaves intact every time it cuts. And we're done. All jokes aside, this is actually like pretty cool, but look what it allows us to do. <laughs> now for fun, here's some things it can't do. Be fast. The logic is pretty simple, but Premiere can be pretty dog ass slow. So I had to add a few pauses into my program. Maybe that's not what you're supposed to do, but that's what I did. Data validation of any kind. Look, just put the right number in the first time. What's so hard about that? And find your timeline if your timeline is not green and also has yellow above it. Look, I didn't say this was good. Now that would normally take me eons, but it actually took me no time at all. And I just ate Doritos while it worked. Just think of all the things that society can now do with all this free time. I mean, cure cancer, sure. Go to Mars, no problem. Teach me how to not say you too to the guy that says enjoy your movie. I'd like that. Naturally, both the source code and executable versions for both Mac and PC are linked below. So if you'd like to have some fun with this program, go right ahead. On to the updates. So there is so much to say. Uh, first, I just wanna say I am overwhelmed by the amount of support that you guys showed on last week's video. The fact that all of you, new and old, were willing to take a risk on arguably not the largest channel on YouTube yet is just awesome. I will not let you down, even though I just kind of did but I won't let you down again. And if you're not subscribed, I mean, I don't know what you're doing. We're clearly going places and fast. I mean, we just hit a thousand. I'm making that up. At this point, we haven't hit a thousand yet, but I'm gonna guess that we have by then. So that'll be awkward if we haven't. Two, I was sent a new channel banner by a uh, pan person by the name of Tyler. So I thought it over and I've decided that I'm gonna do a new thing. So you guys can now submit your own channel banners to this email and every week I will pick a winner and the winner will go onto the channel as the channel's channel banner for the entire week. Tyler wins by default this week, but if you'd like to dethrone him come next Friday, I mean, Go for it. Now to the juicy bit. How did the ads go? So we started at, I think around 360 subs. And as of recording this, we are at nearly a thousand. Maybe that's not crazy, but I mean, certainly we're finding the right people and I am stoked for what the future holds. Now there's of course more to it than just these numbers. And I contemplated for a while how I should show you all of this data given the, the campaign for me filming right now ended literally this morning. And I decided that it really deserves its own video since I couldn't make one for today. So tune in next week for the answer to the question, which Michael did the hub like the best? Oh, oh, it's not even working. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no.